Hello everyone, welcome back. We've got a couple of more trades to discuss. As the Montreal Canadiens have sent Gain Dodonov to Dallas Stars, the Winnipeg Jets have acquired Nino Niederreiter from the National Predators, and the New York Rangers have sent Vitaly Kravstov to the Vancouver Canucks. We'll get to all those coming up right now. Hello and welcome to another video here at the N2N Hockey Channel. As I said, we could get a couple of smaller uh, videos discussing a couple of trades, and we've got a few here. So we'll start off with the first one that happened over the past day, and that is Vitaly Kravstov. Now, Kravstov was traded to the Vancouver Canucks by the Rangers in exchange for Will Lockwood and a 2026 seventh round pick. So I think this is a pretty good deal for both sides. Kravstov's a former first round pick. He has still really good potential, I think. He's more of a top nine forward, but he's been boxed out of the Rangers' top nine, so he's been mostly a healthy scratch for most of the season. There was a lot of talk about him being traded last year when he wouldn't report to AHL after not making the team, and he went over to the KHL and played his entire season there. Uh, he played well in the KHL, putting up six goals and 13 points in 19 games, but I still think he can do well in the NHL, so going to Vancouver I think is good. He's going to have a couple of fellow Russians there, like Ilya Mikheyev and Andre Kuzmenko, so I think going over there will be good. Now, with Brock Besser possibly being traded and Mikheyev out for the season, I don't see why Kravstov shouldn't be able to get a top nine role in Vancouver, at least for the time being. See how he goes with the top nine role and go from there. Kravstov's in the final year of his deal and will be a restricted free agent at the end of the season, so not too long term of a contract, and hopefully he can do well and earn himself another one in Vancouver. I think he's still. He still has some pretty good potential. He has three goals, three assists, six points in 28 games this year, so he hasn't played overly much, but I think he should be able to get a chance in Vancouver. So wouldn't be too shocked if he got into Vancouver, played consistent third-line minutes for them, and maybe had a better season than he was with the Rangers. But I think good for the Canucks to get this young player. As for the Rangers, they get a seventh-round pick. That 7th round pick is ways away from now into the 2026 draft, so it's not too much, but they do get some draft capital. As for the other one, uh, Will Lockwood was a 3rd round pick in 2016 and was just starting to get some NHL time. Last year, he got his basically first taste of NHL action, getting no points in 13 games, but he did have a fantastic AHL season, putting up 9 goals and 25 points in 48 games. This year, once again, he started in the AHL. He did well, putting up 12 goals and 18 points in 26 games. But he has been called up a lot bet more than he did last year. He has been injured as well at some points, but he has a, his first career point and an assist in 13 NHL games this year. So I think Lockwood's going to be a possibly a really good bomb six forward for the Rangers. The reason New York made this move is because they need to clear some cap space to try and go after Patrick Kane. Uh, they put Jake Lecisions on waivers yesterday. Uh, they're trying to acquire Patrick Kane, so there's a lot of moving pieces for the Rangers to try and get Kane, and they just need to move Kravstov's contract off. So getting Lockwood, they can put him in the minors for this year. I think in time he should be competing for a bottom six role, so I don't think that's a really bad move by the Rangers at all. Uh, they get some more draft capital in the form of a seventh round pick in a, a couple of years from now. But I think Kravstov is probably the best player in this deal. Uh, Kravstov has the really high ceiling potential, possibly still being a top six forward. And I think if he can find his game and Vancouver does well with him, I think it could be the winner of this deal for sure. But I would like to know what you think. Which team wins this deal? For me, personally, I think it's the Canucks. Although I do think if Kravstov doesn't pan out, maybe the Rangers win this deal. But it's going to be interesting to see how Kravstov fits in the Canucks top nine and how Lockwood fits long term with the New York Rangers. Uh, next, we have another significant deal. The Winnipeg Jets uh, took care of some of their issues with their scoring as they acquired Nino Niederreiter from the National Predators in exchange for a 2024 second round pick. And I think this is a pretty good deal for both sides. Uh, the Predators are not trending towards being a playoff team and a lot of people are saying that they're more likely to be sellers right now. Even yesterday on the 32 Thoughts segment on Hockey Night in Canada, uh, they said that the Preds are wide open for business, and besides UC Saros, Roman Yossi, and Philip Forsberg, they're listening on just about anyone, so it's not surprising to see Niederreiter be moved. He's a really good middle six forward who can put up some points. Last year, he had a fantastic season, putting up 24 goals and 44 points in 75 games with Carolina. He went to free agency, signed a two-year deal with the Predators in the offseason. He's done okay, putting up 18 goals and 28 points in 56 games so far this year, but I think that he can still do really well. And given the fact that he did sign that two-year contract, this isn't a rental for the Jets. They're going to have him for the rest of this year. 
plus next year possibly so if the Jets can continue to do well he'll be another good player to have in their top nine come next year for another playoff run if they can so good move for the Jets to get him he's going to help some depth scoring I think that's going to improve the Jets a little bit more as well I don't think this is the only move the Jets will be making but it is a significant one uh, you had Cole Perfetti go down with an injury he's going to be out for at least about two months so he could easily miss the rest of the season so Given the fact Perfetti was a staple in their top six this year, Niederreiter could definitely help replace him. So I wouldn't be too shocked if the Jets went out to acquire another top nine forward given the Perfetti injury. But one of the biggest problems I saw with this team was they didn't have too much depth scoring and they addressed it in this trade. So really good deal. They're going to have Niederreiter for this year and next year. He's a really good middle six scorer. As for the Predators... He was playing pretty well, but with the Preds not looking too good right now, I think selling off a couple of pieces may be the best way to, for them to go. Uh, they get a second round pick in next year's draft, which I think will be really good. Depending on how Winnipeg does next year, that could be a really good pick or a more later in the draft pick. But still, I think a second round pick for Niederreiter is pretty good for the Predators. I would not expect them to be done either. Uh, there's been talk about possibly moving Fabro, uh, Ekholm. There's a couple of other guys out there as well, so... Definitely not the only player going to be moved, I think, by Nashville. So keep an eye on the Jets and the Preds. Jets may try and add another top nine forward. Predators may try and move a couple of players, maybe some defensemen next. But they definitely get their trade season started with Niederreiter going to Winnipeg and a 2024 second rounder going to Nashville. So pretty good deal, in my opinion, for both sides. I think for the Jets... This helps their goal scoring, uh, it helps them for the next couple of seasons, and it's another good top nine forward they get. For the Preds, they get a second round pick for a player who probably wasn't going to remain with the team beyond next year, so getting a second round pick for him is pretty good, and I think they, it's probably the trend that the Preds will start using. So, tell me who you think won this deal, I think it's pretty up in the air right now. I think the Jets, for the time being, probably won the deal, given the fact they got Niederreiter, but... If the Preds can hit home on that second round pick next year, uh, it's quite possible that the Predators do wind up winning this deal. And lastly here, a trade that happened earlier this morning. Uh, the Dallas Stars send Denis Gurionov to the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for Evgeny Dodonov with 50% of his contract retained. Now this is a pretty smart move for the, uh, both teams. We know that the Canadiens do want to try and get rid of at least some of their veteran forwards. We know that they've been rumored to be moving guys like Adonov, Druin, and Hoffman very much over the past little while, uh, dating back to last offseason, and they're finally able to move one. They acquired Adonov in the offseason from Vegas for the Shea Weber contract. Uh, he hadn't really done overly great this year, but over the past couple of weeks, he has started to pick up his production a little bit. I think Adonov can still be a really good third-line forward for a team, and I think he should be able to fit really well in Dallas. Now, He'll probably just take Gurionov's spot. This trade, given the fact that the Canadians retain 50% of his salary, does give the Stars $400,000 more in cap space. But for Dadonov, he can probably help in the bottom six for the, for the Stars. I would expect him to probably play on the third line, maybe taking Gurionov's spot with Jamie Benn. And I would expect him to do really, really well in that role. But definitely, I think Dadonov is a good veteran forward who does have some playoff experience and I think could be a very useful piece to the Dallas Stars, especially at a $2.5 million cap hit. And I think if he can play consistent third-line minutes and maybe find his game, he can still be a very productive and elite goal-scoring player that we saw with Florida a couple of years ago. As for Gurionov, he's been a very inconsistent player. He had a career year last year putting up 11 goals and 31 points in 73 games, but this year only has 2 goals and 9 points in 43 games. So he hasn't really done overly great this year, but maybe in a consistent top 9 role with a team like the Montreal Canadiens, uh, he can play consistent minutes. He's In the final year of his deal, he has a $2.9 million cap, but he's going to be RFA at the end of the year, so it's quite possible that the Canadiens do end up resigning him in the offseason. I would expect them to probably do so, but I think Gurionov could be a really good addition to the Canadiens top nine. I think if he can get consistent top nine minutes and he can play well with good players, I think Gurionov can consistently put up some good points. I mean, he had 30 points last year. I think a ceiling could be 40 points if he can, can stay consistent. So good move for the these two teams. Canadians get a good young forward who can fit into their team for the next couple of seasons. And if they can turn around and be consistent, will be a really good addition to the Canadiens forward group. 
For the stars, a pending ownership free agent, they save $400,000 in cap space. The Donov can help on the third pair. He brings a little bit of experience. He's a really good sniper. And if you can find his scoring touch he had in Florida, he could be a lethal addition to the Dallas Stars. So really like all three of these trades. I would like to know what you think. Which trades do you think which team won? In my opinion, for the time being, at least, it's Vancouver who won the Kravstov trade. Winnipeg who won the Niederreiter trade. And in my opinion, the Canadians who won the Gurionov deal. But I think... In time, maybe Dodonov is a really good addition for the Stars and helps them win the Cup. Maybe the Stars win this deal. Uh, maybe the Predators can hit on that second round pick. Maybe the Preds win this deal. Maybe Kravstov doesn't reach his full potential as we all think he could. And maybe Lockwood turns into like a really good middle six winger. And maybe the Rangers win this deal. So I definitely think it's not in a sense stone about who wins these deals. But I would think that... For the time being, at least, Winnipeg, Vancouver, and Montreal won these deals. But I want to know what you think. What do you think of each of these trades that have happened over the past little while? And what do you think each team will be doing next before the trade deadline? Probably not going to be the only video we do over the next couple of days. There is some talk that the Vegas Golden Knights are close to acquiring Ivan Barbashev from St. Louis. Uh, there's also some talk that uh, Timo Meyer is now down to two teams with the Devils and the Golden Knights. Uh, there's also some talk that the Patrick Kane... Uh, is possibly going to move to the Rangers and that could happen soon so there's a lot of big moving pieces right now so probably not the only video we're going to be doing over the next couple of days but definitely keep an update on some other videos that I could be posting in the near future and I'd like to know what you think about all three of these deals down in the comments. So that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video and subscribe. I also do a blog. I'll leave a link to that in the description below and I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.